Okay guys, I just want to show you really quickly how to best approach this particular homework assignment um, so that when you're preparing for the exam you kind of know how to do practice problems. Um, so I, I'm just going to walk you through from the very start to the finish to show you some of the shortcuts that I, I make as well. So here's your Canvas page, right? You're used to this. Um, go down a little bit, right, because this is just the splash page that tells you about the, the introduction of this section, module one, module two. Let's get down to that link for the homework, okay? So here we go, link to the homework. Click that, that's going to take you over to this page, right? It shows you a little bit about the homework, says whether you've done it or not, whether it's available or not. I'm in student view, I'm not really used to this. Um, copy this entire URL here, right? This is the homework assignment. So I'll just hit Control C, I'm going to open up a new tab up here, I'm going to paste it in there and hit Enter, right? That's going to then open up the homework assignment. Remember, this is on Dropbox, so if I ever made changes to it, you'd be able to see it like right away. Um, so here we go, right? It says data collected from our class. Um, use only the age data for the calculations of this assignment. Um, go away, I'm already a member. Um, so you can scroll down here. You can see we've got height, eye color, number of siblings, uh, favorite color, um, and age. We know for this assignment we only need age, so later on we're going to say that's our one variable, that's the x variable. Okay, so scroll down and see what the assignment tells us to do. Um, we have to calculate measures of central tendency, the mean, the median, and the mode. Um, we then have to answer the question, which of these is best for this data set, and why, um, if you believe that one to be better than other measures of central tendency. We then have to calculate measures of variability, the range, variance, standard deviation, interquartile range. Um, and then finally, we need to make two graphs of these data neatly, use a ruler, right, so we'll draw these out. Um, those graphs being a histogram and a frequency polygon. We remember that these are basically the exact same graph. One's just done with bars, and the other one is with lines that are connected. Um, Okay, so for the purposes of this assignment, include any outliers. That means when you got to that age 40 person, that's me in the data, don't throw me out, include me in there, um, and anybody else that you thought might have been an outlier. Um, so keep them all in there, analyze them all together. So don't perform any outlier analyses or anything, just, just go on. Um, show all of your work, every calculation, every rounding. So you'll see how I, I mean by that um, when I go through the actual calculation here in a second. Um, but I want to see all of that work so that I can identify if you've made an error, where that error likely arose, right? So I can determine how many points you, you might still be eligible for. If you do not show me your work on any of these calculations on homeworks or exams, you will not get any grade at all potentially on that assignment or that exam. Um, okay, so we also have some formulas down here. I'm always happy to give you the formulas. I don't think you should have to memorize formulas. You just have to know which ones are which and how to use them, right? That, that I think, is the, the more important part anyway. So what we see here is the formula for the mean, right? Mu is equal to the sum of x divided by n. x is going to be our age variable in this case. Um, and we then see our uh, variance formula, the lowercase sigma squared, is equal to the sum of x minus the mean squared divided by n. Um, standard deviation then is simply the square root of that. Notice the 2 goes away, right? It's no longer squared. So then on this side we take the square root to sort of compensate for that. Okay, so that, that's it. Um, now we get down to the end here. We have um, a table that I provided for you. I'm going to try and remember to give this to you for every case, but if for some reason I've forgotten on an assignment, then just let me know. I can, I can make these tables again if, if you're not sure how to. Um, but so we have a place then we can put in our x data, put in our x minus mu data, our x minus mu squared data, and we can show all of our calculations. We can put in sums of squared. We can put the sum of this column and the number of observations, which makes it easy to calculate the mean. We can then write the mean, the median, and the mode. And then as we calculate them, the variance, standard deviation, range, and intercourse range. This allows us to do everything. Um, and as I've said before, I, in statistics, the devil is in the details, guys. You really got to pay attention to what you're doing because um, little mistakes do add up pretty easily. <laughs> that's that's not a math pun there, but they, they could literally add up. Um, but you know what I mean. If you were to write down a 2 and later on see it as a 3, or you put the decimal in the wrong place, or you multiplied something in this cell by something in this cell when you weren't supposed to, those little errors can, can throw off your final calculation. So try and avoid that. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'll show you the shortcut steps that I do for this particular problem that help um, speed it up. So it does download it. Um, the direct download, let's just take this sucker, put it wherever you want. I'm going to throw it on the desktop. All right, yes, replace that one. We're going to open it up. And here's your homework assignment. Hopefully you've got Microsoft Word, you've got a University of Michigan account, so you can get Microsoft Word. You just have to log into the Microsoft servers and, and download the software and authenticate it with your UMich account. So um, anyway, we're going to open it up here in Microsoft Word. It looks like uh, rather slowly. Let me get rid of this because we're going to be working with this in just a second. And let's see, do we have a Microsoft Word open yet? No, we don't. What the hell's going on? 
Let's go back and oh, it again. No, okay, there we go. Okay, <laughs> you know, even in the example, sometimes things don't work. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So, uh, page width. Um, all right, so here is our data, right? Um, and what we want to do is get our data down into here to make it more workable, right? So, here's what I'm going to say do put your cursor right there, scroll down to the bottom, hold the shift key, select them all, okay? Now, however you want to copy it, I do control C. Now, open up Microsoft Excel. Bing! To a brand new blank notebook. Okay. Head on up to the front. You can do this in Google Sheets and, and other software like that, so you do it however you want. Um, paste it in there. I prefer to get rid of all that formatting, so go down here, match destination formatting, just put it in there. Now, to make sure you're selecting all the data, just hit Control A. Now hit Sort. Okay, so if you're not there, you're already in this the sort of, excuse me, the, the home menu, and go over here to the data menu and hit sort. Make sure this box is unchecked because you don't have any headers in there. If you'd written age or something, then you could check that box, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. So sort by column A, hit OK, and notice now our ages are from lowest to highest. So let's take that back. Let's copy it again. Let's go down to the table we want to work with, and let's paste it. Now, if you just were to put your cursor here and you hit paste, it does this and that. This is not what we want to do. So instead, let's highlight all these cells again, and now let's paste it, and boom, you got it. Okay, so now you have a page that is easy to work with, right? You can print this out, you can work your way through your calculations, uh, which we will do in just a second. So make sure you're on this page somewhere. File, print. All right, don't print all of them, I just need the current page. And then go boom, and you are ready to go. All right, let's see some calculations. Okay guys, I want to show you how you take it now to the next step and do the calculations. So we've got this printed out sheet of paper here. Um, I'm going to use a pen, but I would suggest you use a pencil. This is just so that hopefully you can see it a little bit better. Notice that we've already got the numbers now organized from lowest to highest here. So we could now start to identify um, the basic measures of central tendency, things like the median and the mode. Um, so in this case, there are um, 21 observations. So if you want to do the four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way down to 21, um, excuse me, um, uh, uh, 30, 32, 32, excuse me, um, 32 um, observations. That's because there's 31 of you and there's one of me. So 32 means that there would be 16 below and 16 above whatever middle point there is dividing that, that data. So if you were to count down here, um, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, it ends up right here after the second of the 21s in that list, okay? So I'm going to put a mark right there, and I'm going to write quartile 2, median. Right? So I know what that number represents. Now if that's the case, I've got 16 up here, 16 down here, I can go ahead and find the middle points of that because it's going to be 8 and 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Put that line right there between the last two 19s and quartile 1. Mm -hmm. Same thing down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So put it between those first two of the 23s and quartile 3. So now we actually know we can go ahead and skip to the IQR, right? So 23 is quartile 3, 19 is quartile 1, 23 minus 19 equals 4, and we have our interquartile range of 4. Okay, so I said there were 32 in here, so let's write that down right there. Um, we know the median, because at this point right here, so 21 and 21, it's the spot between 21 and 21, which is very clearly 21, right? So if you add them together and divide by 2, you get 21. So the median is 21. How about the mode? What's the most commonly occurring score here? Well, it looks like actually in this case it is 21. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 people in the class that are 21. The next closest would be 20 and 19, each having 5 individuals. So one mode, that mode is... 21. Now, for the next step, we have to figure out the mean, and then we can work our way through here to the variance and standard deviation. Oh, let's do the range real quick. That's easy, right? Highest score, that's definitely me. 40. Lowest age in the class, 18. So 40 minus 18 means our range is a 22. Okay, so we are literally over halfway done in terms of our final answers, but we do still have to do all of this work over here. So, time to get out the calculator. All right, turn that sucker on. Man, my calculator is dusty. And start adding up all of these scores. Ooh, I didn't even hit the, the plus sign there. Okay, make sure you know how to use your calculator, which I apparently do not. Plus 18, 
plus 18, plus 19. Okay, so we're going to add them all up until we get a whopping total of 706. Woo, 706. Okay, so sum 706. So our simple formula then for calculating the mean, remember, is to sum up all of the scores. That's that. Divide by n. That's that. So we need to do 706 divided by 32, and we get 22.0625. Remember, we are rounding to two decimal places at all times. So 22.06. Okay, easy. Now the next step in our calculations here for variance and standard deviation, let's go ahead and write down the mean, 22.06, is, as you can see, x the score minus mu the mean. Well, we know the mean, we know the score, which means we have to do, okay, 18 minus 22.06 equals, and then we got to do it again and again and again, and 19 minus 22.06 equals and then we do that again for each of the times there's a 19 so i'm just putting these little ditto quotation marks 20 minus 22.06 equals do it again do it again do it again do it again 21 minus 22.06 equals do it again 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 22 minus 22.06 equals all right let's just finish this out Okay, now we gotta do all these, right? So, let's get it. 18 minus 22.06 equals negative 4.06. Same thing, same thing, same thing. 19 minus 22.06 equals, if you hit the enter key, it does you equal. If you don't, it doesn't do anything. Negative 3.06. We can actually follow this sort of pattern here if you're paying attention without even using the calculator. And notice that this one would then be negative 2.06. Similar, 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 similar. <laughs> okay, so we've filled out that entire column. What do we have to do next? Well, it says we have to square these values. Now, remember when you square a negative, it becomes a positive. So if you're entering these into your calculator, just don't even bother to enter the negative. Just, just square it, because you know it's gonna be a positive anyway. So what we would be doing here is, put parentheses, negative 4.06 squared is equal to. Now we got to square them all, right? So, like I said, it's going to be positive, so you don't even have to enter the, um, the negative if you don't want to. Square that, hit enter, and we get 16.4836. Remember, two decimals, so we will just simply write down 16.48. And I'll write it in all these places just to make sure we got it. 16.48. <laughs> All right, so this one here is just going to end up being a very small number. So if you plug it in and you put 0 0.06 squared, right, you're going to end up with 0 0.0036. We're still truncating to two decimal places. So 0 0.0036 is just going to be 0 0.00, right? So zero. Um, so I'll just write that down right there. Um, and then we just keep going, right? So. All right, so now we have squared all of those deviation scores, right? The times where we took the mean, subtracted off them from the score, so we can see how far each score is from that mean. And because some of them were negative and some of them were positive, and we're just trying to get an average deviation, we have to square them to get rid of all of that. So now we have all these really big numbers that represent how far each score is from the mean. So we need to add all of those up together. Remember our formula, that numerator is a sigma in front of this so that means add all of that together so we need to add all of these scores just like over here i'm going to suggest that whenever you have to add a big column add them all up so in this case you add them all up and you get a 671.76 now go do it again add them up a second time make sure double 
check, right? Once you've got a double check, you know that you've added them up twice correctly, then you know you are more than likely have the right answer. Uh, another shortcut if you have things like this is to say, okay, well, these four are together, and if I added them up, it was a 65.92, right? And same thing down here. If I added these up, it's a 46.8. And if I add these up here, it's a 21.2. And so if I continue that down, 6.72, right, this is going to be 0. And then we'll leave all these sort of separate because they're just sort of all over the place here. Um, oh, and, you know, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I did this so fast, I didn't even notice that I, I wrote down the wrong number. This should be 0 0.88, okay, 0 0.88, 0 0.88. Eight. So, double check if you if you're just writing down my numbers and not doing the math yourself, then you are you're not doing this properly anyway. Okay. So anyway, we have all these together. We added them all up. We double checked them. We have six seventy one point seven six. Remember that our variance formula now just simply tells us to take this divided by this. So six seventy one point seven six divided by thirty two gives you variance. Right. So six seventy one point seven six divided by 32, then we get variance to be 20.9925, so 20.99. To get standard deviation, we just take the square root of it, right, because this is that, and this is that, just the square root of that. So for my calculator, I have to do the second for that function. I, guess I like to use parentheses, it just makes me feel like I'm more certain that it's doing it correctly. So I put it in parentheses and I got the square root of 20.99, which gives me a 4.5814, but it rounds to 4.58. And there you have it. We have calculated the mean, the median, the mode, the range, the IQR, the variance, and the standard deviation, including those, those couple of shortcut steps that I use as well. Um, now let's look at how to graph that information. All right, guys, now it is time to start the graphing. So get yourself a blank sheet of paper or some graph paper. I don't care which. Remember, you're hand drawing these. I don't want to see something created by Excel or graphing software. It's not that hard to graph things by hand. I want to make sure you can do it and I can see you can do it. After that, use software all you want when you get out of this class. Okay, so what do you need? Ruler, pen, paper. All right, okay. That's all we need. And we need our data. So I'm going to refer back to our data from before, I'll show it to you this way so it makes a little more sense, or maybe this way, or maybe this way. Either way, our data. We need to figure out how many of each of these particular data points there are because we need to create a histogram and a frequency um, polygon. So I'm going to start with a histogram. I'm going to put some axes on here, right? So again, use your ruler, please. It will help. Throw on another one. Looks like my pen is dying. Hopefully this will stay dark enough. If, if not, I'll, I'll grab another one here. Um, you know what, let me just go ahead and grab another one. I'm going to grab this pen here. All right, so we have our axes. Remember, a histogram. So I'm going to even write. Oh, apparently I don't have any pens that work. There we go. Now it's going nicely. I'm going to write histogram at the top. Histograms always have frequency as their y-axis. Then whatever your variable is, and the frequency of that variable is going to be your x-axis. So in this case, we're working with age data, so age is going to be our x-axis. All right, we're labeled, we're ready to go, we need our, our marks, and we know that the mode for this particular data set was 21, it occurred six times, so that was the most frequent, so we know this axis has to go to at least six. So let's just do that, we'll mark off some spots here. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm not super concerned that these are equally spaced right now, okay guys? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, we need to do the whole x-axis. We know it goes from age 18 all the way to age 40. So, 18, 19, 20. <laughs> So, 18, we look over here at our data, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 18s, so it's going to go all the way up to this spot, right? So, get out your ruler, draw a line all the way up to that spot, draw it over a little bit, go over to here, and let's carry it down. Alright, so, 18. 19, there were... 
One, two, three, four, five of those. We have to go up an extra spot here, so I'm going to line it up at this side because remember the bar is touching a histogram. We'll go up to there. We'll take it over a little bit. And then we're going to take it all the way back down to the baseline here. All right, continue that process over, right? So Okay, this is important here. There is nobody who is 27, 28, 29, or 30, right? 26, and then we jump to 31, which means there's no bars for 27, 28, 29, or 30. But there's one person who's 31, so we'll draw the bar for 31. There's one person who's 32, we draw the bar for 32. Finally, there's me, way out here at the end at 40, one person who is 40, and so you draw the bar for 40. And there you have your histogram. Easy peasy. All right, now let's look and see how you would do a frequency polygon. All right, so it's basically the same thing. So let's start with our axes here. I'll make it a little bit wider so I have more space. So like I said, um, just dots. So 18 was a dot that had um, all the way up to five, or excuse me, up to four, because there were four of there. So at 18, there were four. At 19, it went up to, here okay, I'm gonna use the math so I can sort of see where I'm at. It goes all the way up to five. At 20, it was also at five. At 21, that was, oops, sorry, I left one off over here. That was where we had our mode. So it was the high point here. So let's. All right, so like I said, we've got 18, 19, 20, and 21 in there. Um, 22, there were only three individuals. So at 22, we only go up to the height of three. For these numbers in between, remember we didn't draw bars there. If it helps, think of them as being dots at zero, right? Because this would be zero, and there were zero of those, so zero is zero. So zero, and now we connect the dots, okay? So. And now we have our frequency polygon and that's the end right that's how you do your descriptive statistics that's how you make your histogram and your frequency polygon um, box and whisker plots pretty easy as well in fact you know what let's do it just for the hell of it even though it's not part of this assignment just so you can see an example of how we might do that um, so let me grab my pen back out of here all right so I box and whisker plot. So we still have our overall range, so let's just put in our x-axis here. Okay, so box and whisker plot. Now, take this back out so you can see our data again. Remember, quartile three was 23. Quartile 1 was 19. Our median was 21. So let's do that first. Our center line starts with our median, so it's going to be at 21. So if I just go up a little bit and I draw a line here, I'll put it high up so you can see the, the plot fairly well. Okay, so I go up to 21. Our quartile 3 was at 23. Let's go over to there, draw another line for the edges of our box. All right, so that one right there and then our quartile one was down here at 19 let's draw another line down there for one at 19 and now let's close our box All right up there at the top also down here at the bottom 
All right, so that then represents quartile two, quartile one, quartile three, the center of our box, right? Um, just so you don't forget, I'll write those up here, but you don't have to write those on the box. Um, then it's your low point and your high point of the range. So um, in this case, the lowest score was an 18. So we go to the middle of the box, put a big dot, draw a line over for that whisker. The highest one was a 40. So you would go all the way over to here. Let's see how far out do I go? Looks like all the way to about right uh, here, let's say. And then we draw our line all the way over there to there. The box whisker plot really kind of lets you see just how much of an outlier <laughs> I, I tend to be, but you know, I'm the professor. So you could, although I don't want you to do that for this class with your own data, I'm going to draw a separate one right below it to pretend like we did one there. Out of the regular students in the class, the highest age was a 32. So if I put a dot there, drew a line. You can see a more reasonably balanced box and whisker plot, and in that case I would put an asterisk out here to indicate that there was still a data point, but we had considered it an outlier. So that is the box and whisker plot, and now that wraps up all of the various calculations and graphing you might be expected to do, um, at least in this first section of the course. All right, cheers.